you know, these things could be a fire hazard. I hit one of these in my front lawn um, a month or so ago, and the thing started sparking and smoking and burning, and then I realized what it was. It was a vape pen that one of my neighbor's kids threw in my front yard. I keep finding these things in my front lawn. The neighbor's kids use them up and just throw them over the fence. Vape pens, of course. I don't vape. Never have. Don't smoke either. But I keep finding these. I hit one with my lawnmower and uh, it caught on fire. And Good thing the lawn was wet or it would have had a, a major fire. So these do have a lithium battery in them and if you chop them up with a lawnmower, well, you could have a problem. This one here, unfortunately, I didn't hit this one with a lawnmower. I saw it before I ran over it. So uh, we're going to take this one apart and just see what the hell is inside these things, what type of battery is in them, and whether the battery itself can be uh, utilized for something else. So let's get started. Let's first of all peel off the label and see what we can do to get into these units, what they're made out of. Are they metal? Are they all plastic? But somewhere in here there will be a, a lithium battery, guaranteed. And it'd be interesting to see whether it's a rechargeable type or a single-use lithium cell. I can break the end off. There we go. There's one end off. We can get the other end to break off here. Oh, I smell the cool mint. I obviously don't want to cut into the where the battery would be, which is inside here. Okay, so there's a battery inside. You can see that right there. And then there's this other end, which is probably what's got the juice in it that people inhale or the filter. But we'll pull that out. Oh, there it is right there. So that's all that's inside here. We've got a lithium cell, 1300, a 13, uh, 350, 500 milliamp hour. There's a little heater on here, and there'll be a little switch, obviously, that turns it on when the person inhales. This might be the switch up front here. And then there'll be a heating element in here that, that heats up and causes the juice to vaporize. So this will be the little heating element down here. We'll just cut off these wires from the battery. Okay, now it's safe. So the rest of this stuff I can just dispose of this crap. in a metal tube. I guess when mine hit the lawnmower it hit it just in such a way that uh, it's a mulching mower so it, it hit it more than once. But anyway it caught on fire. That's the heating element there. Get rid of all that crap. I'm more interested in the battery. I take it this is the little sensor that senses when you're drawing air through it. The front. Here's the battery itself. Just unwrap the battery. I want to see this looks to be a rechargeable battery actually. So let's just remove the tape on here. See if there's any charge left in the battery. It's probably dead. That's probably why it was tossed away. Is I think the charge probably goes down on the battery before they run out of their uh, their vape juice. 
Well, it's still got 3.2 volts, so it's it's down to its low state of charge. But I bet you, I bet you, if I were to put this thing into my uh, into my lithium battery, my universal lithium charger, I bet you this charge this battery would recharge because this looks to be just a standard uh, 13350 3.7 volt lithium cell is what it looks to be. I can peel off this red tape. And indeed, it will plug right into my lithium battery charger, showing it at uh, 3.67 volts, and it is charging at a half an amp. I'm gonna let this thing sit here and see if it'll charge back up. Looks like it's taking a charge now. This should be a great little lithium cell that could be used for something small that needs a small lithium battery. So when you see these um, disposable vape pens lying around, keep that in mind. You can pull them apart and get a rechargeable lithium cell out of it. Now don't just stick this on like a USB cord and charge it up that way. That's not going to work. You need a charger that has the charge protection circuitry for lithium cells. So if you're going to build this into something, you're going to need to use a charge controller IC and cut current cutoff. This charger has all those built in, so I don't need to put it uh, put a cell in that's got its own protection because this particular charger is designed for lithium batteries and it will cut off the current when the voltage gets up to 4.2 volts it'll cut off the charge so this is a design battery charger as all lithium chargers would be they have protection built in so you can't just connect this up to a USB cord and plug it in and expect it to charge it'll charge for sure but it will also overcharge because USB chargers put out 5 volts so that would be not a safe way to charge a battery you need to use a proper charger like I'm using here but there you go if you find any of those disposable vape pens lying around you can crack them open and get yourself a free lithium cell for your projects speaking of lithium cells I'm curious as to whether this little standard little 350 milliamp hour lithium cell which I found in another piece of equipment that was defective might be able to be adapted to my little SanDisk player looks like it might fit I may have to tack the wires on but will it work we'll just pull the back off this one again and take a look see whether this little cell will fit in here because it has all its own charge protection circuit built in okay now this one here used three wires as opposed to two hmm. oh I've got the old cell which I took apart from the uh, this little sand disc player that the positive terminal is the terminal on the right because of course the battery still measures voltage just to, to it's all puffed up so it won't make contact so that would make this terminal positive that terminal negative if I tack the positive terminal of this battery onto here and the negative terminal onto this one it might work so let's give it a try and see if it will but then again it may not because this battery appears to has the protection circuit is tripped that's probably why the device it came out of was taken out of service because the battery itself went into a protection shutdown and shut down the power. This came out of a doorbell camera that was defective. And that's probably why the doorbell camera was defective is because the battery itself died. So that idea out the window. I'll try charging this up with my power supply which I have set at uh, 400 milliamps of charge current at uh, 3.7 volts. Okay, just turn the current down a bit. So we're charging at 350 milliamps and I've got 3.7 volts going to the cell. We'll see whether this one's, whether the cell just went dead or whether the protection circuit, it is drawing current so I know that it is taking a charge. As you can see, it is taking 350 milliamps of current. So we'll see whether this battery will take a bit of a charge maybe it is okay and it's just been sitting around it's been sitting around here for quite a while so it's possible that it just from sitting around went bad and if that's the case it might work in this little uh, media player primarily just need the battery to work to maintain the memory because what happens on this is every time you turn it off it has to scan the memory card again 
for the music that's on there. So having a battery in place will keep the the uh, contents of the memory card in the volatile memory. So it's been charging now for a couple of minutes. We'll just take it off charge and I'm going to see whether the battery is going to take any charge at all. So negative terminal to the negative lead, positive terminal to the positive lead. Looks like it's at 3.5 volts so maybe the cell is okay and it will take a charge. We'll try tacking it on here and see whether it, it charges up inside this unit here. So I'm just going to put the slightest amount of heat onto the terminals here just to just to get them to take a bit of solder. And it's lighting up. That's a good sign. It's refreshing the database. That's an even better sign. It's telling me that the battery is low. I'm just going to put the back on this unit. And uh, I'm going to stick it on the charge dock and see if it's going to show that it's charging. Because that battery fits in there quite nicely. And it's going to obviously be a lower capacity than the original one, but if it's uh, if it will charge and charge up full, then that will be a bonus. Let me go get the speaker and see if it'll charge. Okay, I dropped the other on to here. And well, I think that about answers our question as to whether this is going to charge or not. It is it says it's charging and the battery is now almost full. Excellent! So it looks like this may work go to our music here. Select play all. Oops, it was turned up all the way. Now I can go into my menu I think on here and uh, select um, random play and this should hold music options. Shuffle on. Repeat on. Oh, shuffle. And that should uh, that should work. There we go. Now this unit when I if I unplug it, if I shut it off, I unplug this unit, it should shut off on its own. But it should remember all the, the content so that the next time I fire it up it's ready to go which it does because when I unplugged it obviously it didn't uh, it didn't lose everything like it would when there was no battery excellent okay I think I've uh, got my solution to my little Sansa just a used battery from an old doorbell camera that the camera itself checked out and it went in the garbage so before tossing it I pulled the battery out thinking I might be able to utilize it and it looks like it's gonna work in my little Sansa player. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. And as I say, this battery is now also fully charged and ready to go. If I measure the voltage on this one, my charger has told me that it is full. If I measure the battery on here, we'll see that this one is charged up to. It'd help if I connect it to the terminals. Four point one four volts, fully charged. Now I just gotta find something that needs a dinky little battery like that. Anyway, thanks for watching.